place. So uh, good morning, everybody. So yeah, I will uh, go back to, to uh, volcanic activity. We've seen a very nice introduction yesterday and try to dig into possible impacts on the Atlantic regional overturning circulation viability. So a rapid impact of volcanic eruptions on the climate, just to recall what uh, this is a, a, a just illustration from Driscoll et al. We can see from, from different reanalysis, it induces quite rapidly an intensification of the stratospheric polar vortex, surface and I would like anomalous atmospheric circulation and winter warming over Eurasia. These, these uh, impacts are very rapid, one or two years after the eruption. Can we think of a longer lasting impact of volcanic eruptions on the ocean? Um, one of the first uh, clue for significant decadal scale impact of volcanic eruptions on the ocean has been given by Church et al. So this is a mixture of observations and simulations. And you can see that both for global ocean heat content and global mean sea level, you see some decadal variations in the time series that seems to be like happening uh, concomitantly with uh, the, the eruptions that occurred over the historical period. With a more um, idealized experimental setting, uh, Stenshikov went a little uh, a step further in, in these issues. So here he shows the anomalous uh, sea surface temperature after a Tambora-like eruption that occurred in 1816 and a more moderate eruption that occurred in 1991, the Pinatubo eruption. You can see that in case of a very, quite strong eruption here, the, surface at the, the signal at the surface of the ocean seems to persist for about 10 years. Uh, it's maybe a bit shorter for weaker eruptions. And if you look into the deep ocean, these are ocean heat content anomaly. Uh, the top 300 meters in blue, the whole depths in, in green and, and in black, sorry, and the, the, the below 300 meters in red, you can see that it seems that volcanic signal can persist for longer than the cable time scales in the deep ocean. What happens for the MOC? So this is a very brief uh, literature review. So in the same experimental setup, the, the, the same paper, Stanchikov et al, he saw in both cases for both weak and a little bit stronger eruptions an intensification of the MOC uh, within decadal timescales. This is also consistent with this uh, famous paper by Otera et al, where here they used a simulation of the last millennium and they look at composites of the MOC response after several eruptions and they also see this intensification. This is also consistent with um, last millennium simulations uh, run with the ECOG model. So all this seems to be fine. We are happy this seems to be consistent. However, I also noted, oh yeah, I'm sorry. In most of these papers, the mechanism associated to this intensification is linked to precisely the NAO inducing uh, enhancement of the deep convection in the North Atlantic and intensification of the MOC. However, the literature also shows several, of, several uh, different uh, responses. We've already seen this, this graph yesterday, but I think it's interesting. This is the, uh, so here it, it's in an ensemble of simulation. Uh, Davide noted the pre-eruption value of the MOC against the, well, the post-eruption anomaly against the pre-eruption value, and you can see a clear uh, tendency that like a, at least a clear um, <clears throat> uh, impact of the initial state on, on the response. Another study performed with HATCM3 showed an intensification of the MOC here uh, after the Krakatau eruption, but not after the Pinatubo eruption. So there seems to be a sensitivity to the eruption, perhaps the magnitude of the eruption. And finally, this paper, I think, also have been uh, have been uh, discussed slightly yesterday uh, in the CCSM model. Um, these, these authors showed that after a sequence of decadally paced uh, intense volcanic events, there seems to be a persistent response of the sea ice volume in the Arctic, which then caps deep convection in the, in the northern North Atlantic and induces a weakening of the MOC after these volcanic events. So, all this doesn't seem to be that clear. Now, volcanic eruptions in the past, so which are they? This is a record of the, uh, an illustration of the global average radiative forcing associated to volcanoes here in black as compared to greenhouse gases over the, the, the last 40 years. Most famous eruptions are the Agung, El Chichon, and Pinatubo uh, uh, eruptions. And now if we 
look here, I, I tried to, to keep the same scale for the global average radiative forcing, and this is what happens over the last millennium. And I think I can convince you that the past thousand years can be a relevant period for looking at the impact of volcanic eruptions. First of all, because they are much more, and of course the period is longer, and also because they are much stronger. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus on the last millennium simulation, and I will use mostly two, a family of two models that we run at uh, the IPSL. Uh, the former version that was used for CMIP3 and the, the newer version used at CMIP5. The oceans are very similar. The atmosphere has a slightly improved, uh, increased uh, resolution. But still, these, are, these two simulations of the last millennium are run independently. Um, so this is what we get, for example, just as an illustration. So here uh, at, at the top, I show the uh, forcing in terms of solar variation, uh, the forcing in terms of vol volcanic eruptions, and these are results. The air temperature in the northern North Atlantic and the sea surface temperature in the Atlantic, just to convince you that these are really independent simulations. Of course, it's the same family of models, but we have this, so, so you, of course, these time series, they don't completely superpose because of internal variability. We can try to compare them to proxies. So this is a proxy taken here in the north, north of Iceland, reconstruction of SST from Alkenon. And these are, these are the time series that we get from the, from the proxy. So it, of course, it's very difficult to, to try to, to match the wiggles. I think one can at least see here this nice drop that seems to be concomitant with this very strong uh, Samalas eruption in 1258, and perhaps a drop here associated to the Tambora eruption. Back to our topic today, the MOC. So this is the MOC, maximum of the MOC that we get in the two simulations. So again, is there a synchronization? Is there a phasing of the MOC at all? Is there a consistent response of the MOC to the external forcing? It's hard to tell from these, so what I, what I did it works, yeah. What I did here is compute a correlation over sliding windows between the two MOC time series. Um, and here is the significant level, and you can see that there seems to be periods over the last millennium where these, the MOC are simulated by these two more or less independent uh, models, or at least simulations. The MOC seems to be synchronized or at least positively correlated. And if you look a bit closer, I think one can say that this corresponds to periods of intense volcanic activity, first here around the 13th century, and then perhaps later here around the 17th century, with a small effect of this Kuai eruption here, perhaps. Okay, um, is this robust at all? So I leave this as an open question. I tried to take the MOC from the last millennium simulations I could find on the, on the ESG server, and so I, and, and I compare, so I compare CCSM4 model, MPI model, my both IPSL models, and yeah, that's it. So I have four of them, and I try to correlate the MOC two by two to see if there is any synchronization of the MOC. I would be interested to discuss this with you. I'm not sure about the response. Here I highlight the same periods as I highlighted for the MPSL CM5. There are some some periods where there seems to be a synchronization, for example, here between IPSLCM4 and CCSM4, perhaps slightly here, one can see at least an intensification of the correlation, perhaps here, CCSM4 and IPSLCM5, so CCSM4 seems to be a nice friend of IPSL models. Um, but, well, this is, I don't really have the answer, and I come back to, to the um, IPSL model, and in order to gain understanding in the mechanisms that could lead to this synchronization, I compute composite analysis over selected eruptions, um, <clears throat> and this is what we get. So in phase with the eruption, this is the composite of the Ekman pumping term, uh, together with the MOC immediate response. So this is a very rapid adjustment. What happens because of this NAO-like response, there is an Ekman, anomalous Ekman pumping here in the northern North Atlantic around 50 degrees north. And this leads to a very rapid adjustment, barotropic adjustment of the MOC, simply as a response to the dynamical, uh, well, a dynamical response to the anomalous atmospheric circulation. Okay, um, this, I, just, just to note that this, is, this has been found with other models, so this seems to be a quite a robust issue. Now, at longer timescales, what happens? 
because of this bimodal correlation that I had seen in the sliding correlation, I had to cut this, these periods of the last millennium into two, uh, two different periods. So first, if I concentrate on these intense and, and cumulative events, rapidly, uh, rapidly, each simulation following, I mean, eruptions following each other very rapidly, I see in both models a reduction of the MOC. So if you remember what I showed at the very beginning, this is quite opposite to what several other, other authors have found. And this is due, in fact, to here I show um, a few years after the eruption, the anomalous mixed layer in colors and the winter ice cover in, uh, in, um, in contours. And you can see that quite a long time after the eruption, there is uh, a, weakening of the anom uh, a weakening of the anomalous winter mixed layer, so a weakening of the deep convection due to sea ice capping, persistent sea ice capping in the northern North Atlantic. The eruptions are so strong and, and following each other so rapidly that, this, that the cooling is very strong in the northern At North Atlantic. The sea ice invades the Nordic seas and the subpolar Atlantic Ocean and this kills or at least reduces the, the, the deep convection. Okay, and now if, if now I concentrate on the weaker volcanic eruptions that are also more uh, spaced, and so the system perhaps, this is just an hypothesis, has more time to adjust after each uh, eruption. I have more or less a consistent response in both simulations with an intensification of the MOC. The structures are not the same. The response seems to be slightly dependent on the model, perhaps on the eruption. and but. Oops, sorry for this figure, but uh, it's supposed to show the anomalous mixed layer depth and the SST a few years in, in this model here, IPSL, uh, five and six years after the eruption. And I hope you can see here in, in, in colors, this is the anomalous mixed layer. There is an intensification, a deepening of the, of the mixed layer uh, associated to a, a, a surface, well, which induces a surface warming. So it's really an intensification of the convection after this NAO-like response that helps to induce this acceleration of the MOC. <clears throat> we've, well, we've already talked about this, uh, this uh, study yesterday. It's, it's the, 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 study, the study that I've shown is also consistent over the whole last millennium if you only pick up uh, Pinatubo-like eruptions. So here we had a very um, constraining criteria. We had to pick up uh, Pinatubo-like eruptions that were not followed or preceded by very strong volcanic eruptions. So we only picked up five selected volcano, and this is the composite response of the MOC in the same simulation. And I think one can see a consistent intensification of the MOC, something like 10 to 15 years after the eruption. So this is a consistent response. Interestingly, we found a similar synchronization of the MOC in the historical ensemble of one of these models, IPSL CM5A. So this is the MOC in an ensemble of five uh, control simulations, so absolutely no forcing. You can see that no time scale or synchronization seems to appear here from these time series. There is no forcing. And here is the historical simulation, so just the control plus all the observed forcing over the past uh, decades, including Volcanic eruptions, as I've mentioned at the beginning, we have an eruption here in 1962, the Agung, and one in, in uh, 1982, the El Chichan eruption. And I think you, you are convinced that here there is, there seems to be a synchronization in this ensemble, although again, the, the simulations are completely independent, and there seems to be an, an intensification of the MOC some 15 years after the, the eruption. Uh, this is this is quite consistent also with the CIMIP-5 ensemble if you select a subsample of the models that has a similar viability time scale as the IPSL model. In this case, so this is the red line. This is the average of eight other CIMIP-5 models which we picked up because they have the similar uh, pre preferred time scale in the North Atlantic viability. And here you can see that there, there is a very nice synchronization in the historical simulations. Again, it's important to say that here there is no nudging, there is no observations ex except for external forcing, and, and there is quite a nice uh, synchronization, I think, with the IPSL model. So with this, I shall conclude. Um, so there is indeed a decadal timescale response, uh, decadal timescale response, sorry, of the ocean temperature to volcanic events. 
uh, simulated MOC over the last thousand years shows some synchronization among models. I, I would be interested to have your uh, feelings about this. And I think if this happens, it's mostly during periods of volcanic activity. Yet, beyond the robust dynamical adjustment at very short time scale, the response of the MOC at decadal time scale seems to depend strongly on the volcanic eruption magnitude. So, during, for, as a response to strong and cumulative eruptions, there is a weakening, rather, of the MOC, I think, linked to sea ice capping, uh, while uh, as a response to more moderate eruptions, either from the recent period or even from the last millennium, there is rather an intensification of the MOC. <clears throat> so I have two, two, two points as, as challenges or perspective for the future. I think these simulations, uh, I mean, these results call for a more systematic assessment, so sensitivity, uh, assessment of sensitivity of the response to magnitude season of the eruption. So there is much more to do, and, and I think perhaps this will be uh, addressed within VOLMIP. There is also, we've discussed this uh, very briefly, a need for updated forcings, so this is a recent paper um, that, that appeared. So he, in, this, in this graph here, the, the purple uh, shading shows the response of the, of the, of the models to, to volcanoes. I mean, the reconstructed response of the models to volcano over the northern hemisphere as a response as, uh, after this eruption in 1258. And, and the, 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 the lines here are the tree ring reconstructions. So you can see that the models, they largely overestimate the response, uh, the northern hemisphere cooling after this eruption, both after the 1258 eruption and the Tambora eruption. And this is a new uh, module to, that takes into account microphysical processes uh, in the stratosphere for simulating the impacts of the volcano. And you can see now a much more agreement between the models and the proxies. Thank you very much.